This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. In the first day after a long weekend, I'm sure we could all use a bit of a lift to kind of perk our spirits back up. Well, fear not, because it is Dinger Tuesday tonight at FanDuel Sportsbook, where you get bonus bets back if a player in a game where you hit a home run prop hits a home run. So we're going to lean into Dinger Tuesday for today, outline my favorite Dinger Tuesday bet, and talk about other bets I like across Major League Baseball for today. Got a same game parlay, a strikeout prop, a couple of money lines to hopefully get the juices flowing on this Tuesday. Well, Welcome on into covering the spread. That's right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and FanDuel Research. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a managing editor of digital media for FanDuel Research, here to break down Tuesday's MLB betting slate, letting you know where I see value at FanDuel Sportsbook for tonight. We'll dive into all that here in just one second. But first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to the Covering the Spread podcast feed wherever you get your podcasts. We're on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, et cetera, et cetera. If you like what you hear, just search for Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts. Hit subscribe. If you like what you hear, leave us a five-star rating and review as well. Dingers, blasts, moonshots, whatever you call them, everyone loves home runs. And with FanDuel's Dinger Tuesdays, you can love them even more. That's right. Dinger Tuesdays are back for another season on America's number one sports book. Just bet on a player to hit a home run. And FanDuel will give you $5 in bonus bets for every home run hit during that game. As if you needed another reason to love the long ball. Make every moment more a FanDuel official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. Must be 21 plus and present in select states. Bonus issued as non withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. Max bonus $25 per game. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1 800 Gambler. Over at FanDuel.com slash RG in Colorado, Iowa, Kentucky, Michigan, New Jersey, North Carolina, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Tennessee, Vermont, and Virginia. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342 in Arizona, 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat in Connecticut, 1-800-9-WITH-IT in Indiana, 1-800-522-4700 in Wyoming. And 1-800-522-4700 or visit ksgamblinghealth.com in Kansas as well. 1-877-770-STOP in Louisiana. Visit mdgamblinghealth.org in Maryland. 1-800-GAMBLER.net in West Virginia. Hope is here. Visit gamblinghelplinema.org or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support in Massachusetts or call 1-877-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY in New York. Let's begin things here by talking about Dinger Tuesday. And again, the thought process for Dinger Tuesday is you want to target a game where you expect to be home runs hit on both sides. One of the best games for that thought process for Dinger Tuesday is this one between the Angels and the Yankees, because the Yankees, very powerful team facing Griffin Canning, has had a lot of issues with hard contact this year. But the dinger bet I like is actually on the opposing side. That's on Taylor Ward to hit a home run. And Ward, right now at FanDuel Sportsbook, currently plus 470. That's my favorite bet for this dinger Tuesday. And there's a couple of reasons why I want to go at Ward here. The first one is he's facing Nestor Cortez, and I like a lot of what Cortez is doing, but he still lets up a lot of hard contact and a lot of fly balls. That can lead to some home run issues for sure. And he's also a lefty, which gives Ward a platoon advantage. Ward doesn't have massive righty lefty splits as at least as far as relative to other righties, but 200 ISO against lefties since the start of last year with a 40% fly ball rate. And that part's fine for me. It's more about what Ward has been doing overall this year. It seems like there's a lot more power in his swing so far. His barrel rate is 14%. That is up from 10.4% for his entire career. His expected Woba is 387 up from 338 last year. So he's making really hard contact, and it's led to 11 home runs already. Only one of those 11 came off a lefty, but it's also just 46 plate appearances, and there's been a lot of hard contact in there. So Ward, again, doesn't get a massive boost because it's a lefty, but he's facing a guy who does let up a lot of fly balls and a lot of hard contact. Ward's getting a ton of barrels this year, and it's led to good results and good underlying numbers. So yes, Cortez could shut him down because he's a very good pitcher, 
But I think that plus 470 is a pretty favorable number for Ward for tonight. And again, we do benefit here if the Yankees go deep against Canning as well. So I'm going to go with Taylor Ward as my top dinger Tuesday bet. He is plus 470 did home run at FanDuel Sportsbook for today. We'll discuss some other guys who could be considerations for a dinger Tuesday as well throughout the show. But to me, Taylor Ward will be the number one guy for tonight. Do you think there's a pretty decent same game parlay available for FanDuel Sportsbook as well? And it comes from this Cubs versus Brewers game. And for me, with the same game parlay, I want to go in with a, a thought process or a thesis a around this game and identify markets in which I benefit if that thesis comes true. The thesis for this Cubs versus Brewers game is that Ben Brown is being stretched out to being a starter, which means may not be as effective as he was in relief. And he also lets up a lot of hard contact to begin with. So could struggle as he gets stretched out and still not fully stretched out and does let up a lot of hard contact. That's going to let lead to a three leg same game parlay for today with the Brewers money line in there. Ben Brown's strikeout prop under five and a half and Willie Adamas to get us two plus total bases for today. Let's start things off with the money line there for the Brewers. It's both because we're kind of betting against Brown a bit, but also buying into Freddie Peralta. Freddie Peralta is an animal at home, gets to be at home for today, and just a guy I want to buy into in general. So that's that's a big part of why I like the Brewers' money line. Let's talk about Brown. Under five and a half strikeouts is uh, currently minus 136 at FanDuel Sportsbook, and he's a very good pitcher, but he's got a 28% strike rate for this year. But a lot of it has come in longish relief, and it's very different to be a starter. As a starter this year across five starts, Brown has a 26.4% strikeout rate versus 30% in his relief outings. The Brewers, his opponent used to be a pretty high strikeout team, but right now they are at exactly league average versus righties. And that's a downgrade there. But also, I have Brown projected at just 80 pitches. He went 66 last time out. He has not topped 90 yet this year. And he's topped 80 only twice in those five starts. So when you add that together, I've got Brown projected for 4.88 strikeouts, and that allows us to take the under at five and a half strikeouts. The final leg, again, leans on the hard contact assumption around Brown. He's letting up a 56% hard hit rate this year with a 44% fly ball rate and an 11.9% barrel rate. So we can find some power bats against him, which could lead to maybe a Jake Bowers dinger Tuesday bet, but Willie Adamas specifically to get two plus total bases, plus 155 at FanDuel Sportsbook, Adamus has a 191 ISO this year, doesn't strike out a lot, and we want balls in play for a market like this, and has a 42% hard hit rate with a 49% fly ball rate. Adamus can hit for power, so again, you could consider him for a Dinger Tuesday bet, but I think that uh, this way, with the two plus total bases, you have multiple routes to cashing, which is, is pretty nice. So when you combine these three legs, the Brewers to win, Ben Brown under five and a half strikeouts, and Adamas to get two plus total bases, that same game parlay comes out to plus 431 at FanDuel Sportsbook. But the key reason, the key thing for me is that these three bets all kind of revolve around the same assumption that Brown may struggle as he's stretched out relative to what he's done across the full sample. And again, we do benefit in the, the money line as well from Freddie Peralta being just a disgustingly good pitcher. So that's kind of the thought process here for this same game parlay. It's also kind of the thought process in general is that you want bets that play well together. Hopefully they don't jack up the, the correlation too much where FanDuel uh, reduces those odds. And it does reduce the odds here because FanDuel knows these bets are correlated, but I still think we're getting good enough value to justify this one. So again, that same game parlay I like is the Brewers money line, Ben Brown under five and a half strikeouts, and Willie Adamas to record two plus total bases that adds up to plus 431 at FanDuel Sportsbook for tonight. Let's talk about some more baseline bets and begin things with a strikeout prop that I like for tonight. Now, this one has been moving a bit throughout the morning, so it's possible you could pull open your FanDuel Sportsbook app and see a different number, and maybe that means you want to wait a bit to bet it. But it's held steady for the past half an hour or so, so let's talk about Luis Castillo. His strikeout prop is at 5.5 with the under at plus 120. That's the route I want to go. Again, it more so comes down to, do you want to bet it now or bet it later? And this is purely a matchup play for me because Castillo's facing the Astros who just really don't strike out. Their active roster has a 17.5% strikeout rate against righties this year. And Castillo 
has also felt just a little tiny bit off this year. Typically, what you see with Castillo is his velocity starts low and then rises as the spring goes along. That's true for most pitchers uh, where, where it gets warmer temperatures, that increases velo, but it's especially true for Castillo. He just hasn't quite gotten that velo bump yet this year. He's at a 25.6% strikeout rate this year, down from 27.3% last year. His swing and strike rate is 12.2%. And the more recent games have been more concerning, where he has just five strikeouts across his past two starts combined. Now, both those were on the road, and Castillo, like most pitchers, gets a boost at home, and his boost is bigger than a lot of guys. So we have to account for that for sure. But he just needs a really big bump here due to the matchup he gets with this Astros team. Working in Castillo's favor is that he has not faced Houston yet this year, which lowers the familiarity with him. But they've seen him a bunch in general, given both these teams are in the AL West. So I like Castillo. I like how long he goes in games. That gives him a path to an over here as well. I'm just not totally sold that we should be getting plus money on the under here. So it's plus 120. It was plus 114, then plus 116. Now plus 120. Maybe it keeps on moving up. If it goes six and a half, it'll probably be juiced to like minus 160 or so. That's a bit tougher. Uh, but with a sitting at five and a half plus 120 on the under, I think there is good value here. And I'm willing to take the under on Castillo with that plus 120 being available right now. Final two bets for me for today are both going to be money lines. Let's start things off here, staying in the West Coast, by talking about the Padres and the Marlins. The Padres' money line is minus 130 as they take on the Marlins, and that feels pretty light. A big part of that is I want to keep on buying the Matt Waldron. If you've listened to the solo shot, we've been talking about Waldron quite a bit the past couple of weeks, where he's been in the strikeout prop uh, discussions over on the solo shot each of his past two starts, and he came up massive in both those games. Ten strikeouts against the Braves, seven against the Reds. I don't want the strikeout prop for today specifically because I think it's pretty fair, but we can still benefit from what Waldron has done this year. He has a 273 X Woba against his knuckleball. It's 287 against his four-seam fastball, which he's throwing more this year than he did the last year. It's a good changeup because he's throwing fewer sinkers, and the sinker is probably his worst pitch. So more four seamers is a good pitch, fewer sinkers, bad pitch. I'm buying into what he's doing as being relatively sustainable as a result. Waldron has a 3.83 expected ERA this year, much better than what his actual results would tell you he's been doing. Not a lot of hard contact, and he's facing the Marlins. We have an 89 WRC plus against righties. Potters can the lefties pretty well as they face Jesus Lazardo. So I think they'll be able to do at least something against Lazardo, who is a very good pitcher as well. But I buy into this enough to like the Padres to win this game. My model has a 58.9% to win. Their implied odds are 56.5%. So I like that enough to buy into the Padres minus 130 on their money line for tonight. I could understand if minus 130 were a bit boring, a bit dull. Um, I think value is value, but I would understand if that didn't quite get the juices flowing. So instead, let's talk about another money line I like for tonight. And this one is quite a bit longer. That's the Washington Nationals plus 210 as they take on the Atlanta Braves. I think there is some value there. And, you know, they're big underdogs here for a reason because the Braves gotten back on track after that blip they had last week. But now they don't have Ronald Acuna Jr. for the rest of this season. That's pretty tough. And they're facing a pitcher who I think is pretty good. Jake Irvin is starting for the Nationals, and he has looked awesome so far. He's added a cutter to his repertoire this year, throwing it 13% of the time. It's not a, a huge pitch and not his best pitch, but it gives him four separate pitches. And I think that that's kind of the key thing here is it makes him – Harder to predict. Uh, gives him four true pitches. None of those are truly hideous. And I think that's been a b beneficial for Irvin so far. He is letting up a bit too much hard contact. That's accounted for in my handicap of this game. But he has a 3.88 skill interactive ERA and a 3.79 ERA. He looks really good. And again, I'm expecting him to come back to Earth a bit in his numbers and his results because of that hard contact. Irvin has not faced the Braves yet with that new cutter, but he has passed some tough tests. His first start against the Phillies, first start against the Dodgers, went six innings in both those, and I think that he can keep this game close. So we'll need the offense to do something against Max Freed, which is tough because um, Freed last week threw a complete game shutout, pitched really well there, and that could be a tall task. But I think Irvin will do enough to keep this game competitive, keep this game low scoring, and hopefully that'll be enough 
to get them across the finish line. The implied odds at plus 210 are 32.3%. I have got the Nationals at 36% to win. So I do think there's good enough value to justify betting the Nationals in this spot. So that's the final one for today. The Nationals money line at plus 210. Other recommendations, again, in case you miss them. Padres money line at minus 130. Luis Castillo under five and a half strikeouts at plus 120. We have got that Brewers same game power at the Brewers money line. Ben Brown under five and a half strikeouts and Willie Adamas two plus total bases at plus 430. And then the home run bet for Dinger Tuesday is Taylor Ward plus 470 at FanDuel Sportsbook. Before I close up shop for today, do got to go through recommendations from last week here on the show, uh, bets that have wrapped up and concluded. We can recap those right now. Let's start things off with the NBA. We talked to Tom Vecchio prior to the conference finals. So this would have been, might have been last week, but yeah, it was last week. And Talk to Tom about the, the Celtics series and about the Mavs Timberwolves series. Mavs Timberwolves not done yet, so we'll recap that one later. But the one that the Tom liked for the Celtics versus Pacers series was the Celtics to win the series 4-2 to two at plus 420. And the Pacers had a shot. They had decent leads in the fourth quarter in three of those four games. So they could have pushed this to six total games, but they couldn't get the job done, got themselves swept. So no one there on the Celtics uh, to win that series at exactly – Four to two over the Pacers. We'll talk more about the Celtics uh, later on this week as we get set for potentially the NBA Finals. I hope my Wolves, we're not talking NBA Finals just yet, but uh, we'll dig into all that later on. We had Dr. Nick Giffen on to preview the Indianapolis 500. You can find Nick on Twitter at RotoDoc. For the Indy 500, he had Colton Herta and Kyle Kirkwood win. Herta was plus 130. Kirkwood is plus 2,500. But Joseph Newgarden got the job done here winning his conse- second consecutive Indy 500. Beat out Pato Award on the last lap. Uh, disgustingly cool pass from Newgarden to get the win there. Goes to celebrate in the crowd once again. So great drive by Newgarden, great win by him. Uh, couldn't get the Herder or Kirkwood outrights, but um, Kirkwood relatively in contention for this race once again. As far as non-outrights, Nick had Colton Herder over Alex Pillow, uh in the as a, a head-to-head matchup. Pillow finished fifth. Herta finished a bit lower in the order, so couldn't get that one. He had Kyle Kirkwood to finish top 10. That was a winner. Kirkwood finished seventh in this one. Nick also had over four and a half or five and a half total cautions. And... That one hit emphatically with eight total cautions in this race. So good call by Nick there. Five to one was for Honda to win the race, and they couldn't. Uh, they they did not win. New Garden driving a Chevy for Team Penske. So uh, pretty good read overall from Nick getting the the caution bet and the the Kirkwood bet, but couldn't quite hit the outright or Honda to win the race. Find Nick on Twitter at Rotodoc. Uh, other recommendation was from the Coke 600. Chase Briscoe to finish inside the top ten. That was plus four fifty at the time we discussed. Closed closed at plus three eighty, but. A rain shortened race, kind of a bummer because I'm not sure if Briscoe would have gotten there, but I had some other bets that I liked that I thought would have done a lot better. Had the race gone the full distance, I had Tyler Reddick to win, finished fourth. So I really wish it had gone the full distance. It did not. And that is how things go in racing sometimes. My lone recommendation from last week was uh, in the Monaco Grand Prix for Formula One, I had Landon Norris to win at plus 550. And once practice started, you can kind of tell that Charles Leclerc was going to be the guy. Uh, didn't have the fastest time in FP1, but he ran a hard tire there. Never got a soft tire run in. And if he had gotten a soft tire run, probably would have been the fastest car on track by two or three tenths in that one. He was fastest in FP2 and FP3. Went out, won the pole, and had a lot of pace in hand to win that race pretty easily. So uh, Leclerc got the win. Lando finished fifth, or finished fourth, I should say. Probably would have gotten a podium if there hadn't been a red flag in lap one to reset the grid because he had already passed Carlos Sainz. But, you know, we didn't have a podium bet regardless. So it would not have helped in this specific market. But uh, congrats to Charles Leclerc finally getting that Monaco win. And we'll try to run it back. Probably talking Lando again, if I had to guess, uh, for the Montreal or for the Canadian Grand Prix in a couple of weeks. That is all that we have here for today on Covering the Spread. Back with you once again tomorrow. We'll have some more uh, NBA NHL thoughts coming up later on this week with Tom Vecchio. We're going to probably talk UFC. We've got a pay-per-view coming up this week as well. So a lot of good stuff to come here throughout this week on the Covering the Spread podcast feed. Th- find that wherever you get your podcasts. Hit subscribe if you like what you hear. Leave us a five-star rating and review as well. 
If you've got any questions for me, I am on Twitter at Jim Sonis. You can also find FanDuel Research on Twitter at FanDuel Research. I want to thank you all for tuning in for today. Good luck to you with your bets, and we'll talk to you once again tomorrow. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. 